I'm Danielle, and today this is an all-level yoga practice. It's a great option if you're looking for some range of motion, strength, and flexibility. But this class is perfect for the beginner as well. Today we're focusing on your sun salutation, as well as your Warrior One series. We'll begin with some centering and close with a short relaxation. Grab your mat and get comfortable. I've got a blanket here under my seat. It makes it a little more comfortable for me. It's also a great option if you'd like some knee padding later on. I've got my yoga block. Yoga blocks are such a valuable tool. You could also use a firm pillow or a stack of books. Yoga blocks help you modify your practice or change the difficulty level, perhaps. It's a great way to bring the floor closer as well in some of those forward folds. Let's begin by finding ourselves comfortable. You can arrange your legs any way you'd like. I've got them folded here, but I also like them off to the side, or I can take my block and sit on it for a little more comfort that way too. Just see what works for you. You can even extend your legs out straight. Either way, find a few moments, find yourself comfortable to sit up tall, close your eyes, roll your shoulders back. Exhale. Take a moment to focus on your breathing. Just that rise and fall of the chest. You don't have to make any changes. Just notice your inhales and exhales. we practice today, I want to encourage you to find yourself present. If your mind begins to wander, it's okay. Just take yourself back to this feeling of these breaths, these inhales and exhales. Remembering that as we inhale, we'll want to lift again that crown of the head. Think about touching the ceiling. This allows your vertebrae to have a little more space. It gives you the ability to lengthen. Be noticing as you exhale the temperature of the room. The connection of your body on your mat. That support that you're getting from the earth. So aware of those inhales and exhales. Inhale, the crown of the head is lifted, shoulders are back and feeling relaxed. Your hands your, are resting on your thighs. Make any adjustments. If you need to change the way you have your legs, you can do that. Noticing that natural breath. Maybe there's a little bit of movement as you inhale and exhale. Let's find a little bit of range of motion. We'll inhale our hands up, reaching for the sky, maybe gazing up. Bring the palms together, come down to the center, exhaling with your movement. And inhale up. One more time. We inhale up and reach. Exhale through the center. Rest your hands here. Your thighs again. 
And let's take some neck rolls, just a few rounds in each direction. Coming back to the center, again, finding that lift in the vertebrae, that extension of the spine. Let's pull the shoulders. A few rounds in each direction here. And take those hands up. Inhale. Let's find some side bends left and right. Returning back to the center. Inhale up. Exhale down. If you need to adjust your legs, I'm going to go ahead and turn mine to the other side now. You may stay where you're at or make an, an adjustment. Inhale up. Maybe do a little back bend here. Reach. And then exhale down. Maybe a fold forward. You're welcome. Or go back to those side bends if you liked those. You always have the freedom to modify and move at your own pace, make changes. You can keep on moving with me even if it's different. Or you can rest if you need to. Come on up again, sitting up tall. Take a few twists left and right. And move into my tabletop. Remember, the blanket is a great option if you'd like some knee padding right here. For tabletop, we want to pull our belly button in and think about our alignment. First, spread your fingers as wide as possible like you're telling someone you're five years old. Then check that you've got your shoulders over your wrists, your hips over your knees. We'll relax our toes for now if that works for you. Let's think about that extension of the spine again. Lift the head forward and bring your tail back so you're actually thinking about making your spine longer while you're pressing your hands. We want to be active in our poses here. And we'll move through our cat and cow poses. So cow pose, the back arches, the belly button goes closer to the mat, and we might gaze up. And then for cat pose, we round the spine, think angry cat here. And we'll just move freely, inhaling and exhaling. back to neutral, pressing out of the hands, feeling the shoulder blades snuggle in close to the ribs just to stabilize the shoulders. You've got your belly button pulled in and again you're lengthening your spine. Maybe shake your hips left and right. You're welcome to draw some circles, find some other free movements. And when you're ready, you'll come on back. Find that neutral spine, we'll go ahead and curl the toes, moving into our first downward dog. So let's have those hands really wide on the fingers. You're going to press yourself up, lift your hips up high. Your, your heels may or may not touch the ground. It's really okay. But either way, let's get moving. We're pedaling out the feet, lifting up the legs. You can bend the knees or not. If this isn't for you, you can stay right here with these moves in your tabletop. Just get some movement here. Range of motion. Warming up the body. And then we'll roll forward into your plank. That can be on your toes or your knees. If you're on your toes, you're taking your knee down and measuring where your hips go. It's hip over knee is the measurement. So if you look, when I lift back up to my toes, my hips don't move because they're in the right spot for the measurement of my thigh. If you're on your knees, you'll just bring them down and notice my body is still diagonal, still pressing actively out of the shoulder joint. For your vinyasas, you have an option to lower down slowly here, and that'll be a great way to strengthen the arms. So 
So we'll just lean forward to see your tips of your fingers and start to slowly lower down. And when it feels, oh, good work, you can put your hips down and finish lowering your chest. Inhale up for Cobra Pose, but let's press those toes into the mat so we know that the back end is active. Heading back to Downward Dog, we'll curl the toes, start to lift up, hips up, and here we are. Let's take that again. Roll forward, plank. Inhale. Exhale, lower to the ground real slow. Notice my arms are super close to my body. Hips down. Exhale it completely on that lower. Inhale, rise. Cobra. Or even up dog, if that's in your practice. We're back to downward dog. And taking a walk forward in that forward fold, you're welcome to be up in a halfway lift instead. Bend the knees. Let's inhale, rise up and find mountain pose. Mountain pose is all about activation. And it's really important for those standing poses that we're getting ready to go through. Mountain pose is pressing the feet into the mat and finding engagement in the legs. We'll do this in all of our standing poses. Belly button in, shoulders back. Lifting the crown of the head to the ceiling. Your chin is parallel with the floor. Arms resting at the sides. This is an active pose. Let's inhale the hands up and find chair pose. And have a seat. So there's an imaginary chair behind me. From the bottom, I'm really pressing my feet into the mat, pulling my belly button in. My shoulders are relaxed, but I've got my biceps up by my ears and I'm reaching my hands. You can always bring your hands down to your heart as well. Still have a strong belly and a neutral spine. You'll notice I'm not tucked and I'm not sticking out too far. I'm just right. Let's inhale up again. Let's take a half flow. Exhale, hinging at the hips. Tap, bend the knees. Inhale, halfway lift. Bend the knees, exhale, rise on up again. Back to that mountain pose. Let's take a high lunge. Here we go, lunge is on your toes with the heel up, if that's comfortable for you. Left leg back, inhale, step back. Everything is facing forward. I've got my hips, my toes, my front knee, my belly button. Gazing forward. How far you step back is okay, up to you. Your knee is over your ankle, so we want to avoid this knee falling into this open space here. Push it back, lining up with those middle toes. Exhale the hands down to the heart. Step forward. Let's take that again, right leg. Inhale, step back, check that alignment. Everything's facing forward. My ankle is over my, or rather my knee is over my ankle. Tracking between those two middle toes. I've got my belly button pulled in. I know my shoulders are over my hips. Getting a great stretch in the front of that pelvis, that hip flexor. Exhale the hands down to the heart. Step forward. Let's take a full flow. Inhale up. Exhale down. Bend and tap. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step back into your plank on your toes or your knees. Lean in and lower down slow motion. Hips come down. Inhale up. My block was in the way. <laughs> Go back to your downward dog. And let's take a walk forward. Remember, if you wanted to be at more of a halfway lift, you can always get up. Get to standing any way you need to until you're ready to make changes. Bend the knees, inhale up. Exhale, mountain. Finding that mountain pose is very active. Pressing of the feet is so important as we move on to other poses. Find your nice stance. Let's find warrior one on the left foot. We'll step back just like high lunge. But this time we're planting the back heel. And I want to tell you a moment, let's make sure your toes, it's sort of a diagonal, 45 degrees, facing this outer edge of the mat. This foot, again, toes forward, knees forward, but you don't have to feel like you're on a tightrope. 
You can widen out your step. Use your whole mat. Everything is forward. Shoulders are back. You're feeling fine. Remember, how far you step back is up to you. Inhale the hands up. Take a moment here, and from your feet up, let's find your body. Come into the room. Find yourself present. Your front foot is actively pressing into the mat. Your knee is over your ankle. You can even look and check. Your belly button is in and engaged. Your shoulders are over your hips, but they're relaxed, not up here crunching up by your ears. Reaching for the ceiling with your hands is great activation in that upper body, but you could also have your hands down at your heart. How far you step back is your choice. We've got a nice stretch going on in this front hip flexor, this left leg. If you need a little more stabilization, activating the, the back glute. So my left glute a little bit more really helps. And of course, aren't we lifting the crown of the head always, lengthening the spine? Let's move on to pyramid pose. I'll straighten out my front leg, start with my hands at my heart, and step my back foot in. Just a little bit closer. I've got two straight legs, and again, hip spin going forward. Let's take it down halfway here, and place the hands on the thighs. This is a great stretch. We've got our glutes, maybe back, hamstring in the front especially. But I've got my belly in and my back in a nice, somewhat back flat, so this is a great core builder right now, holding my mid-level up. I've got a block here that I could use. And if I wanted to come down even lower, I definitely could take it down a little bit. It's up to you how low you want to go. This is a great stretch in that glute and hamstring. But remember, if you've got back issues, you're still building your strength up and your core, even high blood pressure, we don't want to have our head too low, so you decide where you need to go. Let's inhale, rise all the way back up. Step this foot forward and move into a balanced pose. We're going into tree pose, so I'm going to face you. All of our weight will be on our right leg. So first, start with mountain. Press the feet into the mat. Remember, a little squeeze in the inner thigh there. Pull the belly button in. Roll the shoulders back. Lift up. Crown of the head is touching the ceiling. All of your weight will shift to the right leg, and you're really feeling very connected. Yoga is so much about the feet being connected with the mat. Let's tippy-toe this left leg. This could be where you're at, working on your balance right here. Your hips feel very square. That's awesome. Another option, take this knee, turn it out toward the left. Now the heel of my foot is touching my right shin. You can stay right here. Or for tree pose, we could even slide the foot up to the shin. And again, how are those hips? We need to like stabilize them, really press that right foot into the mat. Your connection to the earth, everything in the feet right here. Very important with how we feel connected, balanced, and building strength in the legs. Lift the head. Remember, we're touching the ceiling. If you'd like, you're always welcome to take that foot, jump over the knee, and bring it into above the thigh, or even a half lotus pose if that's in your practice. It's up to you. Some days are going to be more wobblier than others. Inhale. Wherever you're at, we'll put that foot down right next to its mate. And let's go back to the top of our mat. Let's do everything on the opposite side, okay? So how about mountain pose? We've got to start strong. Feet pressing into the earth. Right leg steps back. Warrior one. I want to use my whole mat. Feel stable in my legs. Press into the mat with your feet. The connections you have in mountain, you have in warriors. Press the feet. I've got my knee over. My belly in. My shoulders here. I'm inhaling up and I'm lengthening. I want my head to touch the ceiling. Maybe my hands are reaching. But there's no tension in my shoulders. I'm gazing forward. If I need any extra stabilization, my right glute, a little squeeze there, can help that pelvis stay put. You can always have your hands down here at your heart. 
You don't have to be up. It's up to you. Breathing. Remembering to still inhale and exhale through your poses. Let's straighten out that front leg. We'll move into that pyramid stretch. Structure in this midsection as we fold forward. We can take in this back leg so it's not quite so far away. Got this halfway lift to start. I love this for building the core. So much awesome strength being made in the back during a halfway, halfway lift. Rest my hands on my thighs here, feeling fine. You're welcome to stay right here, especially if you have issues with your back. Listen to your body. What is it telling you it needs? Maybe it needs a deeper stretch in your glute and hamstring, which would just be taking it down a little bit. You've got your block here. Maybe even relaxing your neck a little bit. When you're ready, we'll inhale up. Back to standing. And take it forward. And I'll face you to find tree pose on this side. We start with mountain pose, right? So press the feet, engage the legs, pull them in the belly, nice even hips facing forward, rounded, rolled back shoulders, comfortable hands at the side, your chin is parallel. And let's shift all of your weight onto that left side and just lift that heel on the right. The hands at the heart is a great place to be. Maybe you'd like to take that knee out toward the right and let that heel touch your foot leg on the left side. If you like, you could always slide it up, really focusing on how you're pressing the foot into the mat and lifting, ooh, lifting <laughs> the crown of the head up to the ceiling because we don't want to sit in the hip, okay? We want to lengthen every opportunity that we get. You can have your toes on the ground. It's more important that you're working on lengthening, feeling safe in your body. If you wanted to bring that foot up past your knee, we just don't put pressure on the knee by placing the foot right there. You could always place that foot up inside the thigh or half lotus if that's part of your practice. Maybe one more inhale, maybe not. Okay, my tree, the wind started to blow here, so it's okay. Your balance is gonna be different on both sides, okay? So. Let's take it to the top of your mat and take one of those flows, vinyasas, a sun salutation, whatever you want to call it. Here we go. Your feet, you're feeling comfortable and stable. We inhale up, exhale down. Tap, move your block. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, step back into plank, your toes or your knees. And maybe we're working on that arm strength. Lean forward. Bring your arms as close to your bodies as you can. You definitely feel your arm on the side of your shirt. Lower down slow. It's just like right there. Finish your exhale and put your hips down. Press your toes into the mat. Cobra. Baby cobra. Or maybe a little bit higher. You've always got up dog as an option. Curl the toes. Lift the hips downward dog. Lift the hips high. Pull on the belly button. Really press your hands and feet. And we'll bring our knees to the mat. Sit back, child's pose. If there's another pose you prefer, you're welcome to find a different rest pose. Take a deep breath. And then we'll rise up and let's find ourselves laying on our back. Find yourself comfortable. I've got my knees bent. Hands out to the side. Inhales and exhales. Maybe windshield wiper the hips left and right. If there's any closing postures that you need, you're welcome to take them. Just go back, return to that focus on the breath. If you'd like to take some twists with me, you're welcome to 
let your knees float over to the right side. If you wanted to put your block between your legs or over to the side on the floor so that when your legs twist, they land on the block so they don't twist quite as far, that's up to you. I like to spread my arms out too and maybe gaze over the opposite direction of my knees. Take a few breaths here. Maybe even inhale over, find your twist opposite side, gaze to the right side this time, inhale. Bring those knees back up, take a couple of breaths here. And bring our knees into our chest, wrap your hands around it, and maybe rock back and forth. It helps to feel that sacrum really pressing into the ground, or even drawing some circles with your knees. And wrapping the hands around you, giving yourself a hug, maybe squeezing your hands, squeezing your toes. You ready? How about extending your body all the way out? You have an option if you'd like. If you'd like to put a pillow underneath your legs or even your blanket or your blocks, it's a nice way to relieve tension underneath your low back. It's just an option. It's up to you to lay out your body on your mat and take a few breaths. And we'll focus on our natural breathing, using your breath as an anchor. Take a few moments from the crown of your head down to your toes and just settle your body into the mat. Maybe as you exhale, relax the muscles of your face and let your shoulders sink deeper. As you exhale, let your arms sink deeper, soften your fingers. hips melt into the mat and feel the weight of your legs release. As you exhale, just let your feet fall to the side. Maybe notice how heavy your body feels. Let go of any little bits of tension that you're holding. I thank you for joining me on your mat today. You can stay here as long as you'd like. You're loved. Namaste.